So this is a quick video that I know a lot of you guys are gonna find useful, especially if you're building or restoring a car on a budget. Because you know, here's one of the ironies of life in 2024. It has never been easier to build a car. There are more parts and assemblies available for more manufacturers than ever before. The irony of it is that it's never been more expensive to build a car because nobody's given any of this stuff away. And the quality, okay, quality can be real hit and miss, especially when it comes to transmissions. And for transmissions, that's, that's a, a budgetary deal breaker for a lot of people because when you, if you price out aftermarket transmissions, like a transmission assembly, you're looking at spending thousands of dollars for a relatively common transmission. And again, see the quality part of it. I got a, a, a friend of mine, I won't mention his name, you would know him from TV. But he, uh, he did a transmission, bought a transmission for one of his personal vehicles from probably the biggest known name in aftermarket transmissions. $7,000 for a torque flight based rebuild. This isn't a full race transmission, just a torque flight based rebuild. Okay, seven grand, and it was a pooch right out of the package. It never functioned right. They won't even answer his phone calls, right? And this happens, and it happens often. So what are your options other than to find a core and freshen it up yourself, or lay out the big bucks and, and, and take your chances? As much as I hate doing transmission work, as much as I love doing engines, I hate doing transmissions. Even I bite the bullet when I have to and do them myself. And I'm doing this one for Kiwi. And I think that this transmission is like the perfect example of what you would come across. Because it, what's going on here would apply to like really to any common American type of transmission that we would do. This one is a 727, but it would be the same if it was a Chrysler 904 or, or a Power Glide or a Turbo 350 or 400 or 700 R4 or a C4 or C6, it doesn't matter. Um, it, common American transmissions. A, a rebuild, a full rebuild, like a, a, a light performance street type of rebuild is gonna cost you, through, through one of the stores, one, one of the manufacturers, distributors, it's gonna cost you three, four, five, six thousand dollars and up. It's insanity. It pays to work with a core. So let's define core, okay? A core is an assembly, engine, transmission, rear or otherwise, that is complete, but you have no idea what the history of it is. So you're buying this thing off of uh, Marketplace or Craigslist, and it's coming from somebody's garage, backyard, barn, it's coming from a junkyard or a salvage yard. It's a complete assembly, but you have no idea what's inside of it. So you're buying it as a core. And typically for a, a, a type of transmission that we deal with on this channel, a typical core is gonna set you back $100, $150 or thereabouts, ballpark. Now this is something I can't stress enough. Okay? Anytime you're buying an assembly, right, whether it's a, a, a transmission or an engine or a differential or, or anything like that, if you did not personally, you yourself did not personally hear it run, drive it down the street, feel it shift, go through all of its motions, it's a core. Though you never want to buy a used engine or a used transmission and take it as something that's like good to go, just drop it in and go. Anytime you did not yourself personally run it, feel it, hear it, see it, smell it, and know that it's going to go through all of its paces, purchase it as a core. Never pay more than core price for it. Trust me on this. This is 50 years of experience telling you. Buy it as a core, rebuild it yourself. Now what we have here is the 727 out of Kiwi's D100. So now just to refresh you on all of this, the D100, is, it's, it's, we call it Big Richard, and they're getting this thing ready for power tour. He and Dr. Art right now are, are working on this thing. So Dr. Art has got the, the engine there. And if you remember about a month ago, this is a 318, uh, about a month ago we ran over to Dr. Art's house to try to get this thing running. And we spent the whole day cranking it and it was just spitting and popping and it, it just wouldn't fire. It like no compression, gave up on it. So the next day he tore it apart and found that it had been in a flood. The whole inside of the motor was filled with silt. The rings were rusted into the, into the, uh, the pistons. It was just an unholy mess. 
And since then, he's been doing a complete rebuild on it. So if you want to see the progress on that engine, Dr. Art's Hot Rod Rehab. You go there and, and he's, he's got everything. I think he's up to the point now where he uh, put the cam in it and he's just, just getting ready to finish buttoning it up. So you, you can follow along that series there. But I've got the transmission here. And this transmission is what I would consider to be the typical core transmission. Something that, like I said, you'll find it on Marketplace, Craigslist. You buy it out of somebody's backyard, $100, $150 or thereabouts. What are you going to find inside? Is it worth doing this? So. I didn't have a lot of hope for this thing. Uh, I'll tell you why. One of the first things we saw, this is a transmission cooler line that was still attached. And that's never a good sign. That means that this thing had been dunked, okay? It had, it had seen a mud bath at some point, subjected to the same flood that the 318 was. Now, we have no idea of the history of these parts. They were just an engine and transmission that was stuck in the truck and then it sat in Kiwi's backyard for a dozen years. So we have no idea what the history of this stuff is, just what we can ascertain by looking it over. And this was the first thing. Now before we even got into the pan, did any of that, we have to pull the torque converter out of this. So this was a, this was a fun thing, okay? The torque converter was like literally just welded in there it would spin freely but it would would not come out we turned it twisted it yanked pulled it was just frozen in place so this is another sign that we've got real trouble here right this this thing is going to be a pooch but let's keep going right so finally i get a couple of pinch bars behind it and we pry this thing out it broke itself free and this is what it was hung up on so you can see the rust on these splines so this was an unusual situation because how did water get into the torque converter? It's sealed. It has, in fact, the front seal is still intact. It's pliable and all that. And there's no rust on the snout. How do we get rust inside? Well, evidently what happened was at some point, probably years ago, had to be years ago, after this thing was in the flood, somebody cranked it and pumped the water that was in the pan into the converter. It obviously wasn't us because it, nothing could have rusted that quickly. So this had to be done years ago. So that's telling us that this converter is pooched, right? It, it, obviously, we're not going to cut this thing apart and clean it out from the inside. But we know that this converter has water and rust inside of it. Okay, we're going to toss this. Now, in the event that you're building a, a you know, just a, a mild street and strip or, or a cruiser type of car, you're probably going to go for an aftermarket converter anyway. Something in like the, 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 the 2500 to 3500 RPM range street converter. We'll get the prices and costs of all that stuff at the end of this. I just want to keep going on going through this core. Like I said, to give you an idea of what you're going to find in a typical laying in somebody's backyard transmission core. So we know the converter is pooched. There's rust on these splines, but this will clean up. I'll give this a soak in, in white vinegar or vapor rust, and this will clean up nice. That'll, that'll be right as rain after just a, a day or two soaking. And the rest of these something looks good. Now, the pump, so you say, well, if this got all rusty, then the pump, which is the next thing in the loop, or, or actually the, the part before it in the loop, the pump itself looks really nice. The gears are beautiful. Okay, a little brown there, but nothing that won't clean up easily. And the reason for that is that even if this transmission sat for, you know, 50 years, there's still going to be, in certain parts of the transmi uh, transmission, especially the pump, there's still going to be residual transmission fluid that's, that's captured in that assembly that won't allow water to get in there. It'll just repel the water, it'll keep the rust out. So in this case, even though the converter was rusty, the pump is fine. And that's typically what you're going to find in a situation like this. Now continuing our teardown of this, we got to the valve body. So the pan, I don't have the pan here, 
the pen was just a disaster. It was, it was just disgusting. You can get an idea what the inside of it looked like. The whole pen looked exactly like that. Okay? And then the filter was clogged. I've, I've since thrown that out. But you get an idea what this thing looked like inside. The valve body, this was another one. So we took the valve body down, but it's frozen. It's seized. So enough water got in here and got into the actual valving of it to clog it up. Now, we could tear this thing apart, clean it all out, probably be able to save it. But in this case, we're going to toss it. I'm going to have Kiwi uh, contact John Cope and get a valve body from him. And again, we'll talk about the costs of these things towards the end. But this was frozen solid. The, the shift arm and the throttle position arm, neither of them would move. So we know that this is, this is doomed. Okay, not for us. So so far, everything is is looking kind of like kind of sketchy here, right? We got a bad converter, we got rust inside there, we got a bad valve body. What about the hard parts inside of this thing? When you're buying a core, the hard parts are really what you're after. So, as it turns out, as expected, because this is really what I expected, the hard parts deep inside the transmission look great because just like the pump. There, there's a layer of transmission fluid that's captured in these components, kind of the way that they're designed. And it'll repel the water, it'll keep everything looking good. So, looking inside the drum here, look at the, uh, look at the clutches, right? Still with a coating of transmission fluid on them. They're in nice shape. The steels, no rust on the steels, all very nice. Same here. I right, got some burn marks, so it, it, maybe this saw a little hard use in its life, but that's no big deal. We've got we've got plenty of others. But yeah, the transmission fluid protected all of these parts. Now, parts that weren't coated in transmission fluid, let's say they just, just dried up over time, like this right here. So you can see the bottom of this was facing the valve body, as this as transmission sat for however long it sat, this was facing the water in the valve body, and you could see it's got some rusty residue there. You know, just, just a light coating of what is there, and then you look at the rest of it, this was the, the high part, and it's fine. And this is no, this is no big deal at all. This will just clean right up. Inside, she's beautiful. Look at the condition of what's inside there. You can't always judge a book by its cover. You know, on the surface, on the surface, this thing was a disaster. But as it turns out, the only parts that we really have to replace are the ones that we would be replacing anyway for, let's say, a, a slightly higher than stock performance unit. One that would cost you several thousand dollars from one of the rebuilders. Right? Now, I'm not talking about a local guy. I'm sure a local guy could do it a lot cheaper, but there were fewer and fewer local guys around, especially ones that will work with this older stuff. So more often than not, you're having to buy a complete unit from fill-in-the-blank transmission companies. A lot of bread. All right, so this is what we're up against with this. Throw away parts that would get replaced anyway, and then hard parts that just need to be cleaned up. I mean, you're looking over the, like the bushings and everything, they're beautiful. There's really no signs of wear anywhere inside this transmission. You know, no, nothing that's it's abnormal at all. So if you had paid, let's say $100, $150 for that unit, you definitely got your money's worth. Now there's a lot of work involved in this. And like I said, I hate transmission work. I, I literally, I avoid it. I avoid it like a plague. As much as I love engine work, I hate transmission work. But you know, you gotta bite the bullet if, if you're gonna get it done. We're gonna bite the bullet for Kiwi here. Um, now, going through this, obviously I'm gonna take the rest of this apart and you can see where water did get pumped through this unit. You see some rusty residue there. So like literally everything is gonna to have to come apart. Every passage is gonna to have to be cleaned out. Uh, it's gonna take some work. But again, the core, you pay $150 for this core, let's just say. A rebuild kit is gonna set you back another $100, $150. And a rebuild kit for a basic transmission isn't gonna include anything exotic, but it's gonna have all of the, the clutches, seals, uh, gaskets, 
everything you need, all of the common wear items inside the transmission. So if you went for 150 bucks for the core and you go for $150 for a rebuild kit, that's $300 and a weekend's worth of your time. Now, not all transmissions are created equal. Some are easier to work with than others, but they're all doable by the average guy working at home. It just takes some time, some patience, and some research because any information you need on these things can be found online. If you can get your hands on a service manual, all the better. A factory service manual, that'll give you the exact specs. But you can always find tutorials. You name the transmission, there's going to be 10 tutorials on YouTube on how to rebuild it step by step. Some of them require special, actually all of them really, require special tools here or there, a special press, a special bushing driver, a special whatever it happens to be. Those parts or those tools can usually be improvised and worse comes to worse, you gotta bite the bullet and you gotta spend a hundred bucks for whatever device it happens to be. But again, still, all in all, your cost is gonna be a fraction of what it would take to buy one of these things from one of the stores. And you know you've done it yourself. A lot of the stuff can be improvised. Like for example, there's a special press to compress this piece right here to get the snap ring out so you can change the seals. Well, I, years ago, I fabricated, I don't have it here with me, but years ago I modified a harmonic damper puller for that purpose. And it does a job just fine. I could, I should spring for the proper tool, which probably cost me about a hundred bucks, but I don't do them often enough to really work. It's gonna end up laying in the bottom of the toolbox, taking up space. So I just use my improvised method. There's workarounds for everything. Bushing drivers are cheap. It pays. So let's just say, let's go back to the course of these things, right? The basic core, and the rebuild kit is going to cost you 300 bucks. Let's say you take the core apart and you find it, yeah, you know, the splines are tore off of this or the drum is cracked or whatever it happens to be and you've got to go buy another core. You're still only into this thing for like $450, $500 tops, okay? And now we're talking about a slightly warmer than stock rebuild like this transmission exactly so it's going to get a mild converter i'm going to have kiwi contact my friend shane over at tci and get a converter a 2500 rpm 3000 rpm converter just something just slightly warmer than stock cost on that is probably around 500 bucks or thereabouts give or take same thing with the with the valve body i'm going to have kiwi contact john cope get a valve body through him 350 bucks you know it doesn't need a trans brake doesn't need anything exotic just a nice firm shifting valve body. That's all we need. So those parts, we're talking about like another eight or $900 on top of our $300. Now we're into this thing for 1100. If you gotta buy a couple of cores, you know, the max, the max, the max, and you gotta buy a tool here or there, you're looking at 1500 bucks for what the aftermarket manufacturers would charge you thousands for and you know the quality is good because you did it yourself you went through every step you followed every procedure you checked yourself as you went you made every measurement you know that it's going to work you know it's going to be a, 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 a worthwhile endeavor it's a weekend of your time and you know an investment but it's not a crazy investment and you get the pride of saying i did it myself there is nothing better than pointing at any different part of your car and saying, I did that myself. All right. So I hope you got something out of that. Do some research. You know, you're going to dig into something like this. Learn everything you can about it. Watch the tutorials. Nothing is more valuable than a factory service manual if you're going to do something like this. The factory service manual gives you every specification, every procedure, every little thing. Invaluable if you're going to try to attempt to do a transmission yourself. All right, I still have a lot of stripping and cleaning to do on this case. So I'm going to get to it, and I'll see you tomorrow.